At some point you're going to want to place trees and other objects like buildings on the top of surface so that you can have them generate shadows. The, there's an important distinction here is that for a shadow study, you could use the RCP trees that are delivered with the Revit content because you, as you can see in the illustration, they will show shadows on the top of surface. And the benefit of using those trees is that they're photorealistic when they're rendered and also that they're placed at the correct height on the top of surface itself. However, the shadows from those trees are not taken into account when you do a conceptual energy analysis of a building. So even if there were large trees overhanging a building, uh, the RCP trees are not what you need in that situation. You can model trees as mass families in Revit Architecture uh, or Vasari, and these will be factored in if should they be overhanging an existing building. However, these don't place at the elevation of the topo surface, these place at the elevation of levels when you place them into the model itself. So if I just show the big picture here, you can model that existing site with buildings and trees by bringing them in and placing them. Be aware that if you're using, you probably, for the point of view of an energy analysis, you want to use mass families um, so that the effect of shading is taken into account when you do the analysis of a building. However, if you're only looking at shadows, there's no reason that you couldn't use the RPC trees uh, for a, a, a solar or a shadow study. So I want to show some options for putting trees and for putting uh, building masses into the model here. Um, the first thing I want to show is that under the massing in site and under site components, you'll find components that uh, recognize the where the topography is or where the, the surface of the topo surface is. In other words, if I uh, choose my tree here, there's a, there's a bunch of them in the original template, but I'm using just the Douglas fir. Um, you should see that if I switch to a, another view of the model, that it actually places them at the right elevation on the terrain itself. Maybe that wasn't obvious enough. Let me uh, let me place another. And you see that if I put it at the top of the slope here, or if I put it at the bottom, then when I look from the right-hand side here, you'll see that it actually comes in at the right elevation. And so that's that's one way of putting in uh, trees. You've also got the ability here in your, your view to turn on uh, shadows so that the depending on where the lighting is you're going to see the shadow in the, in the project itself. I'll come back to that later as we do some studies but I just wanted to show that the trees do cast shadow. If I, if I delete those trees the other option that you've got is that uh, you can place the mass trees um, I put I put some into the project here. So under here, for example, tree round. If I bring it in, it'll give you a message that says that it's turning on a display of mass forms. Um, and then I've got the option of do you want to place it on a face? I don't have any faces here. I have a topo surface. Place on a work plane would let me place it on a work plane. So if I uh, if I uh, switch my view, it'll become a bit clearer what I'm doing. I'm going to go to the site view, or actually let me switch to the south elevation. I want you to see that I've got a level that's at a 10 foot elevation in my in my model here. So if I go to that level, uh, sorry, if I go to the site and if I place my mass family, which was uh, at the which was here, that was my tree round. If I, if I place that on a work plane, what I'm doing is actually placing it on level one. So if I go down here a bit, you'll see that I could kind of go, and this is just like a representation of a mass of trees. So I'm going to place some down here, and I'll get the a different shaped tree. Bring that in. 
So I'm just I'm just trying to fill out an area that I think will be casting shade in my uh, my model. And uh, tree conical, maybe I'll just put some down at the end. Just it doesn't matter where these go. They, again, the the idea is just to show that if I want to represent them in my model, I've got the option of of trees or mass forms. If I look at this in 3D, I see the forms that are there. The thing that's a little bit different about the mass forms that I created is the fact that you can make those masses parametric. So, for example, if I uh, if I said that my tree height was to be 60 feet, um, or the or change the canopy height or the canopy diameter, maybe I'll make that 40 feet, just so you see that I can individually adjust those to make them any size that I want. I'm not going to not going to dwell on the trees. Their purpose for being there is to cast shade on the on the site. Next thing that I want to show you is the uh, buildings themselves. Also, you know, buildings in the, in, the, in the form of a, a mass a mass family. So if I switch back to my uh, site plan and I'm looking down on my model here, I've already got this modeled uh, to represent the building that I want to put on the site. So if I go to uh, insert, sorry, insert load family, and I look in the class folder for my building Revit family, I can bring that in and it'll put it under the families that you saw previously. So the mass family here now has the building form, right? And I can drag that in here, make sure it says on work plane. And I'm just going to locate it on top of the building that I was seeing on my, my image. Now at that, at that point, um, there's very little left for me to do except maybe establish where I am in the world. It said St. Louis, Missouri. So what I want to do is I want to say that in the project, if I go manage, and I go to Project Location, and I click on the Location tab. In Vasari, this is in the uh, Analyze tab on the extreme left side, Location. It, it puts me on the internet, and the, the default is Boston, Massachusetts. But if I came up here and I said, uh, St. Louis, and it shows me I'm going to pick the one in Missouri. Uh, I don't know exactly where that site would be, so uh, if I did, I could actually type in the, the the site address and take the project that you see here as the red icon, take it exactly to where the site is. I'm going to just assume it's somewhere in this vicinity and OK. It now knows longitude and latitude for this for the site itself. And I'm actually ready to start doing some shadow studies. So um, what I want to do in the next exercise is show you that maybe with 3D views like this, I could set it up for a particular time and day so that I can uh, see exactly where the shadows fall on my, my model. Now that I'm ready to do that, I can pick my site image and um, I, I'm going to just uh, delete it and leave me with the model that was ready for me to, to analyze.